racing fans and welcome back to it's always speedy in hollywood and what a race we have for you today i am one of your commentators patrick and joining me are my two other commentators who are you guys anyway uh i'm red drum arts and i'm lugia uh go fast eat ass and in lane one speed racer and a bunch of others but we'll get to them in due time yeah so we're gonna be talking about the speed racer movie today but it's been a few weeks. We've been busy. Um, so let's just keep us on stuff. So a lot of people died while we were away. Uh, why don't you start off? Okay. Um, first on the docket is Bobby Rydell, who you might know as Hugo in Bye Bye Birdie. He passed away at the age of 79. Yes. Uh, oh. He, yeah. uh, not, only, not only was he an actor, he was also a singer. He had a pretty successful career. Uh, I'll be honest, I don't really know much of his work outside of Bye Bye Birdie. I did really like him in the movie, though. He was one of my yeah, favorite Yeah, he was works. great. Yeah. 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 You Gilbert know, 70, 79's a good full life. Yeah, good full life. Um, yeah. Gilbert Godfrey passed away. You know, the fucking legendary comedian. Uh, mm -hmm. You probably best know him as um, for his, uh, some of his voice acting roles. Uh, Yago in um, Aladdin, uh, the Affleck Bird. Uh, cyber chase comedian yeah very famous comedian passed away uh recently at age 67 uh, a lot of comedians been dying lately you know with this and bob saget trevor moore all pretty young too Norm actually there's one more role that i know gilbert god godfrey for i mainly know him because of aladdin and also uh cyber chase right. but there's one other thing i know him for it's what? it's a, a video called be cool about fire safety have you guys ever seen that? No. Oh my god, it's it is one of the most '90s things I've ever seen. It's it's an educational video teaching kids about fire safety, but in it, Gilbert Godfrey plays a fire alarm. It's like a, a two oh, minute shit. I cameo. This video. I don't yeah. think yes, I've seen it. Yeah. It's like I after I heard he passed away, I went back and rewatched it. It is so cheesy. Like, also, did you guys know that he did cameo? What? Yes, I did. Yeah. Um, I, I once saw him be like this thing where he was like, he was talking about like, I don't know, Furry is turning him on or something because of Cameo. It was weird. No, I guys, mean, he says uh, a lot of weird shit on Cameo because people tell him to, but actually, um, he I mean, he, helped... says a lot of, he says a lot of weird shit um, like in his stand-up. Have you seen his stand-up? I mean, yeah. Kind of, I've, I've heard a bit we've, of his stand-up, yes. We've talked about his, uh, his Bob Saget bit, right? Yeah. But, um... Actually, a group of friends of mine helped somebody get him on Cameo and say, like, a very positive message, I guess. I mean, he called him Pog. He said, hey, it, this letter says that you have to be yourself. Don't be yourself. I don't even want to be you. Just do what you want or something like that. I mean, it actually got him out of depression, which was interesting. But no, guys, uh, to go back to uh, Be Cool About Fire Safety for one hot second, this thing is ridiculous because not only is Gilbert Godfrey here lending his voice to a smoke detector, but <laughs> Lindsay Lohan, childhood Lindsay Lohan is here, and there's also original music by Little Richard. What is this thing? When was this video? This was like late 90s. I mean, it worked. I mean, I remember watching it a few times as a kid, and <laughs> I know what to do. If I'm ever in a fire, but it's, well, it's, now you know what to do. Okay. Yeah, and no, but I, I, I had this on VHS when I was a kid. But like looking back, it's the most ridiculous thing. It's like a '90s time capsule. Anyway, it looks like his his final role was in uh, Smiling Friends, actually. Uh, really? Yeah. yeah. Huh. You know who he played? Who? Um, God. Really. You played God. They got Gilbert. You know Godfrey what? God. I can't think of a more perfect last role for him. Yeah. Rest in peace, Gilbert you Godfrey legend. Yeah. Um. Anyway, Neil Adams, who is a uh, very prolific comic book artist for both DC and Marvel, uh, passed away. He's probably best known for creating uh, Ra's al Ghul, who's um, the you know the Batman villain. Uh, you may know him. Uh, Liam Neeson played him in Batman Begins. Uh, there's also a uh, Man Bat and um. He played, uh, he created Jon Stewart, uh, the Green Lantern. You may remember that character from the uh, Justice League cartoon that aired when we were kids. Wait, Jon Stewart's a character in Green Lantern? Uh, not the news reporter. He, I know, um, because, that I know, obviously not, but that's 
that's funny that yeah no um, same name John, John Stewart is a is um uh he was actually I believe the first black Green Lantern so that was a uh, really, oh, yeah right. uh Raza Ghoul is also um a person of color so uh he really helped with the race relations I guess so but, now uh, yeah. from this point on I must specify which John Stewart I'm talking about yeah but uh yeah he passed away at the age of eighty so uh good life there. A lot of uh, tributes uh, thrown to him. Uh, he also did some movie posters. Have you ever seen that movie, uh, Phantom of the Paradise? Uh, no. That's the first I've heard of that one. Um, it's Brian De Palma basically adapted Phantom of the Opera, but as a, a rock opera. Yeah, it's probably best known nowadays as being uh, one of the inspirations for Berserk. That sounds insane, but um, the mask that the Phantom wears is basically Griffith's mask in Berserk. But anyway, uh, this guy drew the poster for that, so cool, hmm. nice. Uh, that's uh, I learned that because Guillermo del Toro tweeted that out. Anyway, uh, that's it for the obituaries. Let's talk about um, some new projects in the work. So, Patrick, you saw the movie Your Name, right? Yeah, w we saw it together, actually. Yes, I know we did. Um, actually, it was really funny is that I, I, I'm probably the biggest anime fan of all of us, but uh, I went into that movie completely blind. It was your idea. Yeah, because. I just walked me. in, and I, I didn't even look up the plot synopsis. I was like, sure, why not? So I just went in and had no idea what the movie was about. I was, was I've been bad. meaning to rewatch it, but I haven't seen it since I first saw it. Well, here's the funny thing. Um, Makoto Shinkai, the director, has been criticized a lot because um, he's made a lot of movies, but almost all of them are basically the same. Uh, Your Name's the most popular just because it's like the best version of that story, I guess. But um, What else has always, he made? It might uh, be familiar. Uh, weathering with you, um, 500, uh, five centimeters per second or whatever. I've seen a few of his stuff. Uh, okay, those names don't ring a bell. Never mind. Yeah, he, he basically does like these romance movies with like um about like you know star-crossed lovers with like a bit of um uh supernatural element to it. But anyway, he's making a new movie um that's going to be coming out soon. Um, I think it's going might be about COVID. Who knows? Uh, it's called Suzumi. Uh, locking. Suz Let me look up the English title because I cannot pronounce. Uh, Suzumi is locking up, which is uh, coming out uh, this November. So um, I guess look forward to that if you're a fan of Makoto Shinkai. It's about a 17 year old girl who lives in quiet town in a uh, rural area in Japan. <laughs> yeah, wow, doesn't that sound familiar? That's exactly how your name opened. Um, the story begins with Suzumi meets a young man looking for a door to travel together and find a door in an abandoned house. Yeah, it basically feels like uh, very similar to your name, so. Anyway, Lugia, you saw Uncut Gems, right? Yes, I did. Did you like it? I loved it. Honestly, I think that's the best Adam Sandler movie out there. I mean, he yeah, wasn't no, in a directing I... role for that one, but I'm, I'm just saying a movie with Adam Sandler in it. I don't think yeah. Adam Sandler's ever directed a movie. Yeah, he's never directed he's a movie. He's produced uh, some, written. but. Produced, yeah, he's, written he's produced, but he's not directed. But anyway, um, the directors of... Uncut Gems, they are uh, making a new movie. Uh, they're called the Safety Brothers, by the way. Safety Brothers. Uh, if you haven't seen Uncut Gems, highly recommend it, but also check out their previous movie, um, Good Time, which starred uh, Robert Pattinson. That's sort of what got his career to sort of uh, be revitalized. But uh, yeah, anyway, um, they're making a new movie. So look forward to that. Uh, no idea when it's coming out. Do we have a synopsis or... We just know idea. that they're making a movie and that's it. Apparently, they're making a remake of 48 Hours. But that's a separate project. The current, the new project they're announcing is apparently um, they are re-teaming uh, re up with Adam Sandler. So Adam Sandler is making another movie with the Safdie. So uh, you're probably going to love that, uh, Lugia. <laughs> um, All right. Let's uh, start. Gems 2. Anyway, Electric Boogaloo. Uh, Anyway, recut, recut gems. Anyway, uh, but no, uh, let's talk about movies. Netflix. Yeah, speaking of new movies. So, yes, we're going to talk about Netflix for a little bit. Um, and we got good news and we got bad news. But let's start positive with the good news. Uh, they're all we, animation news, by the way. Yeah. Um, but guys, remember la around this time last year, Blue Sky Studios closed down? Yes. Yep. Yeah, um, because... Disney was hit hard financially with the pandemic. They figured it was, you know, from a financial standpoint, they closed down Blue Sky because they didn't need another animation studio. Business stuff, business stuff. Because Blue Sky Studios shut down, their upcoming film, Nimona, was canceled. 
But Netflix has recently come in to dig that project out of the grave. Nimona's back on track, set to be released next year. And I, th- I don't think it was coincidence that it popped out at this time, because I'm sure you guys know about the whole uh, don't say gay bill in Florida at the moment <laughs> and the controversy Disney's going through. Um, I've heard of what's happening, yeah. Here's the thing. Around, like, a few days before the project was, re- Nimona was announced to be revived, um, some people, some former Blue Sky Studio staff revealed that Disney was not happy with how the movie was coming out because Nimona is very heavy with LGBTQ themes, and there's a same-sex kiss in the movie, apparently, and they were not happy about that. So I think because of that, Netflix was like, okay, we're gonna we're gonna salvage this. We're gonna bring back we're gonna bring what the people want. Unfortunately, uh Netflix also does not want to do what the people want because um they are basically uh completely overhauling their animation department. So uh Phil Rinda, the creative director for the animation thing, he's basically um been fired along with a lot of his staff. And a bunch of uh, several of the anime projects have been canceled. Um, Jeff Smith's uh, The Adaptation of Bone, the TV show, uh, that got canceled. Um, Jeff Smith actually made a little comic about it where he yeah, was like, Yeah, I saw. It he, was, was, he was just really disappointed because... Um, it, was, it was a, a Peanuts tribute where, you know, he's, he's going to... Phone Bone's going to kick the football. And every time the football represents a studio wanting to make Bone yeah. into something... Yeah, because there was like movies, a uh, bunch of movie adaptations, and then this TV show, and it was like, I feel ah, bad. I feel, time. I feel bad because Bone would make an amazing anything in animation. Yeah, but just remember this, Jeff Smith. Even though the movie studios don't got you, the gamers got you. The Bone video game, that actually got made. Wait, really? You don't know this? Uh, fucking uh, Telltale. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, it's a point and click uh, adventure game. Uh, it's got a similar vibe to the Sam and Max games. Yeah. Um, anyway, uh, a couple uh, other applications got canceled. Um, Roald, Roald Dahl, uh, you know, the legendary author of um, Fantastic Mr. Fox, uh, Charlie and Chocolate Factory. We've talked about him yeah, on the show. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, his book, The Twits, was getting adapted, um, and now it's not. Also, Lauren Faust, best known for Powerpuff Girls and uh, My Little Pony and um, DC Superhero Girls. She was going to have a show called uh, Toil and Trouble. That also got canceled. And a bunch of the creators and uh, animators, they've uh, left Netflix and are going to, uh, you know, Cartoon Network, Disney, Nick, or uh, Apple TV and Amazon. Um, Elizabeth Ito, who created um, City of Ghosts, for example, is now uh, working at Apple. Um, If you haven't seen City of Ghosts, recommend it. It's kind of like that... uh, She's the one that made that uh, that that pilot, like uh, "Welcome to Me" or whatever, that Cartoon Network pilot. Any of you guys see that one? No, I have not. No. Everyone, to check. Uh, Welcome to me. You say on the topic of Netflix, aren't they putting commercials in now? Yeah. It's Welcome to my life. That's what I meant. They are. They're doing commercials. Now? Yeah. 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 Is it just like commercials where they're like own uh, originals and stuff? I don't know. Because I, I, I think I've know... seen one or two of those. But I do know that um, their stocks pretty much crashed yeah so yeah n- re- reviving nimona that was the high point and then after that it just went down but i, I want to actually i want to talk about nimona for a second uh the fact that it was revived this actually makes me very happy yeah no it's cool um, yeah. yeah 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 and but... also it makes sense that netflix would do it because um the uh the, per- the person that wrote the original the nimona comic um, she's the showrunner for the very popular Netflix show, uh, She-Ra and the Princess of Power. Huh. So, um, I guess they were like, yeah, might as well, like, you know, you know, the, the, this, this lady's work has done good for us before. Show got like four seasons, uh, probably do us good again. Um, yeah, but, um, but this leads into a question that I actually want to ask you guys. If you could revive any canceled animated project, what would Me and my be? shadow. Me and my shadow, without a doubt. I need to think about that one. Uh, I have an answer, and uh, it's also a DreamWorks movie, but it's it's not that one. It's Larrikins. This was going to be an animated musical set in the Australian outback, but it was canceled after Comcast bought the studio. 
it just i i that just sounds like it'd be a great idea because like how many animated movies or movies in general are set in australia yeah um and, um, and like an original musical come on like yeah. i gotta that you know i mean that uh, is right up your alley yeah. Oh, there was a Phineas and Ferb movie that was going to be planned? Damn. All right, you know what? I want that. <laughs> oh, wait, wait. Uh, I got one. Um, that Steven Spielberg produced uh, animated adaptation of Cats. Ah, uh, yeah, it's with Phil Nibblink. Yeah, it would have at least been better than um, the, the actual, actual one. Yeah. I haven't seen the Cats movie. I have no You are interest. not missing anything. Yeah, I saw, that, I saw that with Lugia. It was awful. <laughs> we're, not, we're not giving that an episode, are we? No. Unless Good. someone really wants us to watch it. I, I no, don't... I, not anytime like, soon, at least. Yeah, I want to stay far the fuck away from it. Here's the thing. I don't want to watch it, not because of the movie itself, but because I just... I don't want to add to the conversation. Yeah. Because I don't like... Here's the thing. You guys know me. I like. I don't like talking about movies that have been done to death. And Cats, even though it's only about three years old, it's been done to death. And I'm just like, just stop yeah um there was this uh, other animated thing uh don blue's dragon lair movie that never got made i'm like i'd like to see that i don't know but yeah that's about it um yeah, for, for me for me larkins anyway so uh a couple people got casted and shit so uh the percy jackson tv show finally got uh the lead actor casted so that's pretty cool um, I saw it. Looks like pretty good casting. Any of you guys fans of the Percy Jackson books? No. Uh, I've only read I the first can't... one back when um, Percy Jackson was still kind of popular in middle school and high school, but that's about it. I've, I've never read the books. All right. Uh, you've seen the movie, though, I know, because yes, we saw I've, it together. I've, I've seen both movies. I, it's been years. I can't say anything. Um, the books are a lot better, and so hopefully this TV, and I, it looks like this TV show is going to be pretty accurate to them, so looking forward to that. Anyway, they're making a Minecraft movie, and Minecraft Steve is being played by Jason Momoa. And it's going to be live action. What? What? Yeah. I didn't hear that part. What? It's live action. Hold a live action. How does Hold that up. work? Hold I up. have no idea how that would work. I need so to confirm like, this. It's going to no, be like it's, a Jumanji it's confirmed. movie? It's going to be like... What? The, I'm, a, I'm guessing it like... It's going to be like the Jumanji movie? I'm seeing a search result that says Minecraft movie canceled. What? Originally scheduled to launch on March 4th, 2022, the film was pushed oh, back over was, a year ago to was, make... Okay. That, was, that was years ago. This, yeah, is, this old, is a new, this is a new Minecraft thing. Never got, the Minecraft movie never got a new release window. Jason Momoa there's started no, Minecraft. There's no, release date. April. there's no release date at the moment. It's just Jason Momoa is going to be in it, and it's going to be live action for some reason. Even though that makes no How sense. How do you do that? <sighs> wait, 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 wait. Sean Levi and It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia star Rob McElhenney have been, were attached to a direct, apparently. I don't know who's directing it now. That's crazy. Uh, Sean Levi directed Free Guy, too, so that's a video game movie. Except it's a video game movie based on a fake yeah. video game. And a video game that believably could it. be live action. We got it. All right. Um, yeah, that's, oh, kinda, yes, we're, yeah, that's we're weird back. as hell. Anyway, Wicked. Yes. Musical territory. Yes. My home. Anyway. Um, a new new development and update on the John M. Chu film adaptation of Wicked. Uh, John Apparently, M. Chu directed In the Heights, if that's in, that, that name he did. sounds familiar. Yeah, so this guy, I loved In the Heights, so I fully I trust this guy. I fully trust this guy to make Wicked into a movie. But he doesn't want to make Wicked into a movie. He wants to make it into two movies. They're going all Dune on us and splitting it in two parts. And this is an interesting choice. Yeah. What does... So, does the content in Wicked warrant two movies? Yeah, that, um, that's a question. Like, where would you even split it? Okay, so of the three of us, I'm the only one who's seen Wicked, correct? I believe yes. so, yes. I've seen um, multiple parodies of it, though. Okay, uh, before I actually go further, let me just cl clarify. I saw Wicked, like, ten years ago, well before I was, like, I became, like, a musical theater nerd. So, I'll be honest, I don't remember a <coughs> whole lot about it i have listened to uh the cast recording uh several times though Good i haven't stuff. seen wicked but i saw oz the great and powerful and that's like kind of similar uh that's about oz this is about the witches yes but the so, witch is sympathetic no. in oz the great nah, no, I'm kidding. anyway um here's here's the thing i 
the only way I really see this working is I do know a good portion of Wicked is dedicated to them when they're younger ish. Oh, so maybe so the like first movie is going to be like that, and the so second like... movie is going to be them when their friendship has a falling out. Oh, so like the the It movies. Remember Could it? be. Because It Part but, 1 was about them as a kid, and then It Part 2 was about them as adults. Um, I looked into this more, though. Apparently, the reason they're making it into two movies is because they don't want to cut anything. Yeah, and the play's like, what, three hours long? Two and a half hours. I guess because, but you, you know, can fit that movie. into one movie. Two and a half can fit that, in one movie. Here's, yeah, that's what I originally thought, because, you know, Les Mis, Les Mis is based on a huge-ass uh, book. They, they did they, cut out a lot, though. That they condensed movie. into a, t here's, yeah, I know, but they condensed it into a two-and-a-half-hour musical that was made into a two-and-a-half-hour movie. Listen, every Bollywood musical is, like, three hours long. You can make a three-hour-long musical. The only reason I figure is because, like, you know, family movie, I guess they don't want, parents don't want to take their kids to a two and a half hour movie. I, I guess. guess. Um, I don't maybe. know. That's the only thing I could figure. But yeah, Wicked's going to be two movies. It's, I don't know. I, Wicked is like, you know, has a huge fan base. So I guess they want to make sure they oh, do yeah. it right. And I Dis guess in order to do it right, Disney they got to split in two. Disney has been trying to get the rights to Wicked for so fucking long. It's like the this, one thing they can never get. This is being made by Universal. Yeah, I know. I'm just pointing out that like di that Wicked is so big that di that you know the biggest company in the world has been trying to get it forever, and they haven't been able to because other people realize just how valuable the property is. <laughs> anyway, but yeah, uh. Part Wicked Part One releases December two thousand twenty four, and Part Two uh, December two thousand twenty five. So we got we got quite a bit of time. Yeah. Anyway, kids, uh, just remember there are only there are two, only two things, three things that Disney will never be able to own: Bugs Bunny, Spider Man, and Wicked. Um. So anyway, uh, let's go to our um, obligatory Sonic news because we always talk about Sonic. We're, this is the. This is the movie podcast plus uh, Sonic the Hedgehog. We really got um, to do the Sonic movie at some point. It's only a matter of time. I I wanted us to what I wanted us to talk about the Sonic Two movie in this episode because one speed speed and two James Marsden's character is Tom Wachowski. And yeah. Speed Racer was made by the Wachowski. It was perfect. We were so close. <laughs> we're so close. But, you know finals and end of the semester. Yeah, you know, it's yeah. just a case of unfortunate timing. Yeah. We'll probably we'll probably give Sonic to its own episode yeah. anyway. Uh, we'll do a double feature with Sonic, the Sonic movie, and Hop. Sega's teamed up with Roblox. I know that sounds the same, but Sega has teamed up with Roblox to make an official Sonic game in the game. And it's going to be done by fans, much like uh, Sonic Mania. Um, so that's kind of cool. Basically, they're letting fans make an official Sonic game, and this time it's going to be 3D. So who knows? Um, imagine it's better than Sonic Rangers. That'd be kind of hilarious. But uh. Yeah. Isn't it's it Sonic Frontiers? It's Frontiers now. Yeah. Oh, Sonic Frontiers. My bad, my bad. Sorry. I do like I do like the name Rangers though. Yeah. Uh so that's gonna be pretty cool. Um, you know, Sonic Mania was probably one of my favorite Sonic games ever. Just not much to say there. It's cool that fans are going to do more work for the company. Um anyway, uh any of you guys pay attention to Coachella this year? No. Nope. I didn't even know what a Coachella was. All right. Until... Well, basically, it's this big ass <laughs> music festival. Ah. All but right. anyway, um, Danny Elfman showed up at Coachella this year, and oh. um, you know, he did the usual Oingo Boingo classics at one point. But um, he was actually the most talked about act at Coachella, which surprised me because, you know, he's not like some young new artist. You know, he's a pretty you know old fella. But then I found out why, and that's because. In between playing Oingo Boingo songs, he was like, you know what? I'm going to make sure these children know who I am. And he started flexing, and uh, they started playing all the theme songs he made, he made for movies and shit. Um, uh, just to, like, so everyone knows that I, am, I created your childhood. So he started playing, you know, the Batman theme. Um, the, did he play Nightmare Before Christmas at all? I believe he did. You uh, gotta do Nightmare Before Christmas. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. Um, Danny Elfman, Coach. Actually, let me look up everything. I believe he played the Spider-Man theme at one point, but like, uh, he played the Simpson theme. Oh, that was that oh was yeah, like crazy. I forgot about that. Yes, yeah. He did. 
It's insane. It was going from like the Simpsons thing to the Batman theme. Like the crowd was going crazy. Like it, that, that was just really, really cool to see. It's like, uh, it's, it's not to say he's being appreciated. Also, uh, Danny Elfman, he was um, fucking fit for his age. Like the dude had his shirt off. He had like fucking like muscles and shit. It was like, God damn. Dude's like 60 and he's still in good shape. So good, good job there. So guys, we've been away from this podcast so long. We finally have footage of Avatar 2. It actually happened. We actually get to see Avatar 2 in motion. For a brief yes, period. Now. And but I'm going to be mean, honest. Yeah. I'm going to be honest. I haven't actually seen the teaser. That's just funny to me that it we actually finally get to see Avatar 2. After how long? Like 10 uh, years? About 12. <laughs> about 12 years. And um, apparently it's called Avatar The Way of the Water. Yeah, actually, actually, they've, re they've revealed the title for all the Avatar sequels, and um, they are very funny. Uh, let me pull it up. So Avatar 2 is being called The Way of the Water. Um, Avatar 3 is called The Tolkien Writer. Um, what? Yes. The Tolkien huh. Writer. Um, there's also Avatar The Seed Bearer, which to me just sounds incredibly inappropriate because that means th that's a womb. Um, but whatever. Then we got Avatar, the quest for Iowa. Um, Iowa. 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 <laughs> Iowa. Yes, Iowa. We're going to the state of Iowa. There's, no, it's spelled like, like it's spelled E Y W A. So there's like Iowa. what six Avatar sequels planned? Yeah, there's gonna be. F uh, they don't come Way up with water, a new movie in 12 water. years, and now we have, like, no. six fucking five. sequels. We're going to have five movies in total. So, yeah. Jesus. And it looks like it's going to be, like, every year, every every two years. So, uh, so like, the Star Wars thing. Yeah, I can't wait till we're in our 30s and Avatar five, and Avatar 6, uh, Glup, Glup Shadow's Return, uh, comes out. Th this is going to be, like, uh, if they make a Back to the Future 4, they need to go to, like, the future. And instead of Jaws 25, it's Avatar <laughs> <laughs> it's Avatar 3, not even like Jaws 25, <laughs> Avatar 3. We're like, god damn. Oh, it that still hasn't great. come out. That would be great. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. but um I don't know. I saw the footage. It looks interesting. Um, you know, got some nice water. I feel like the the fucking guy in Nintendo Me vs Wii U where I'm just like, you know, that's some well animated water. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that's all I got to say. Anyway, let's talk about some modern movies. Um, let's first talk about Turning Red. Yes. So, have, okay. you guys, have you guys heard why Turning Red was trending for the past few weeks on Twitter? Can I please talk about this one? I want to explain it to Lugia. You sure? I, you sure? Because yeah, this one is kind of going over my I head. Am very, I am very okay. enthusiastic about this. You know what? For the ro for... Fine. Go ahead. Okay, okay so... Me and Red have seen tur Turning Red. Uh -huh. uh, you haven't, right? I have not, no. Okay. Right. Um, full disclosure, full disclosure. I'm going to recommend that one day for an episode. Yes. Just because right, I'm I prepared. think that would be, an, that'd be an um, discussion. So Turning Red takes place in 2002. You know, early 2000s because it's about boy bands and, you know. I thought I was explaining this. No, no, I'm just explaining, like, the background of the movie. I want you okay. to explain what happens. Okay, so, um, okay. That, that's the background information you need to know. Um, okay, so anyway. yeah. Boy All bands. Right. It's 2002, boy bands. Um, are you familiar with the YouTuber Mysterious Mr. Enter? I've heard the name before. I don't watch his content, he, um, though. He, ha he, he released a video talking about Turning Red, and he had very mixed opinions on it. But he was very critical about one aspect in particular. And that is that Turning Red does not in any way acknowledge the events of September 11th. Okay, but why? <laughs> I'm not kidding. This got so big it was trending on Twitter. This had to have been a joke, right? No, he was, he was serious. Are you he fucking was serious. kidding me? He was serious. He even mentioned how there were multiple characters with uh, with hijabs in the background, and I was like, that would not slay. I was like, oh my god, these are like 13 year old girls. Why would they give a shit? Because here's like, why yeah. <laughs> I know that changed a lot of things, but it didn't like affect the day to day of people's lives. It was like more of a broad like change. We yeah, we can't say from first hand experience because we were very very young in two thousand two. <laughs> we were two but, years old. Yeah, 
I can say this, though. Um, this is probably a bit of a weak c comparison, but I'm going to say it anyway. You guys remember uh, the Boston bombing marathon in 2013? Yeah. Yeah. We were about the same age as the characters in this movie when that happened. Yeah. That, too, was a terrorist attack. Granted, not to the same scale as 9-11, not at all, but it was still an attack. I remember it happened, but I was not at the forefront of my mind at all. Yeah, exactly. Now, do I know, and do I, I don't think, I don't really think it affected the day-to-day -day that much. Do I know what the highest grossing movie of 2002 was? Lord of the Rings, The Two Towers. Exactly. Oh, I, God. I, I don't really think it affected people, like, I mean, it, it, it obviously affected, like, the global political landscape, but among just normal people's day-to-day -day lives, like, why would... And like, this is a movie about a girl going through puberty. Yeah. Where does 9-11 fit in? It doesn't. Yeah. I don't know, maybe, it, maybe at the fucking um, Four Town concert at the beginning, okay, there they is could the, say, there, this there goes is, out to all the firefighters who are 9-11. Okay, who, yes, uh, there is a bit of destruction in the end, at the end of okay, Turning Red. Yeah, there is, a, there is a kaiju attack, but like... But there's, there's no airplanes, there's no tall buildings, there's, there's really nothing that connects itself. Yeah, like... Is there what, fire? Relevant? No. Oh, no, yeah, there's, no there, there's no comparison. There's, there's not even, like, a, okay, there's a police officer, but, like, there's no firefighters or anything. There's, there's you know, no you connection. Know you know what? Actually, no, no, there's a very obvious connection. Turning Red is about how, after 9-11, uh, America became more nationalistic, a.k.a., like, more conservative. And I'm just completely pulling this out of my ass. I have no idea. There's nothing, anything. Turning Red takes place in Canada. Yeah, yeah, that's another thing. It doesn't even take place in America. So this this was just a huge joke. There were so many memes. It yeah. was. Uh, <laughs> granted, yeah. the, I'll say the rest of the review doesn't really fare much better, but that's pretty much the one big thing everybody's focusing on. Yeah. Like, um, like another another thing he criticized was the fact that the animation style wasn't accurate to the time period, which, which is just makes, a weird thing. Like that makes no sense either because it doesn't matter. Yeah, like it's a <laughs> like. I don't know. It's like it's like what, saying what? What's it's like saying the time? Like I don't know. Still like what? early CG, I guess. That's like that's like saying monster. That's like saying Monster House is, is animated and real like CGI that looks miles better than the actual CGI they had in the eighties. So yeah, it, that doesn't yeah. work. Do do I know what do I know what two thousand two event they should have referenced in um Turning Red? What. To release some Monster Zinc, I did not see any Monster Zinc advertisements, huh? You could have. Monster like, Zinc. Had... Monster Zinc came out in two thousand one. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it was still popular. Yeah, but. Oh, wait, what I was the Pixar movie that came out in two thousand two? Then there was no Pixar movie in two thousand two. Really? No. Huh. My name Nemo came out in two thousand three. Oh. So I guess this is the two thousand. Pixar is going like to retroactively making this their two thousand two Pixar movie. Okay, that's kind of funny. But putting all of that aside, I'm going to be real. I thought Turning Red was great. Yeah, I thought it was a cute movie. Um, the closest movie I can compare it to, uh, you've seen Shazam, right, Lugia? No. Nope. Fuck. <laughs> all right, well, it's a, cute Actually, little, uh, it's a cute little movie. It's basically um, you follow like uh, a group of friends, and I think they, the, the friends are very likable. feels like a, a realistic sort of group of uh, tween friends. And, um, you know, she gets powers, and instead of uh, using it, you know, to become, like, a superhero or anything like that, um, you know, they use it to scam money. And I don't know, I like that. It gives me, like, an Ed and Eddie vibe. That's honestly, like, Mr. Anders said it doesn't feel like a, a 2000s cartoon. I disagree. That is 100% a plot line that would happen in Ed, Ed and Eddie. If fucking um, Ed got turned into a giant, like, monster... You know for a fact that Eddie would 100% use it to get money so they can get jawbreakers. Like, I don't know. This felt very early 2000s to me. It also reminded me of Mitchell's versus the Machines, in my opinion. Like, similar with the family thing, but also just, like, the sense of humor. And uh, I don't know if you got that vibe, too. Uh, I actually haven't seen Mitchell's versus the Machines yet. Really? Not, no, not yet. I, I want to, though. You would really like that. I don't know. But yeah, I have I, a feeling I, I would. I like Turner Red. I'd give it a 7 out of 10. Uh, you got anything to add? Um, no, I'm going to save everything else for when we, we do talk about the movie eventually. Okay. You know, um, all right, so I'm just going to briefly just talk about some other movies that came out. Michael Bay's new action movie, Ambulance, came out. And I'm going to be honest, 
This might be Michael Bay's best action movie. If you're not a fan of Michael Bay, I would still recommend this. I think that this movie has some of his uh, best strengths of his director and uh, doesn't have a lot of the uh, the weaknesses you usually associate with Michael Bay movie. Um, the acting is really good. The action is great. It's focused. I want to see it simply because it looks like my type of action movie. Yeah. Um, a friend of mine actually clued me in on um, some of the production of that movie. Yeah. They used a drone uh, yeah, for no, some of the, the action drone scenes. Drone shots are so yeah. good. This is like the first time. And those were like... all done in one take. Yeah. But they only had the one drone. chance to do all those shots. And if they fucked it up, they couldn't use the footage. Yeah, I know. You have to watch the movie for the drone footage alone. Because this is the best use of drones I have ever seen in a movie. Um. Anyway, plot really? wise... It's it is like a like Michael Bay actually genuinely did something fresh and new with filmmaking. Um, I think he changed the game. Like this, the future action movies are gonna have to use drones like he did. Like this is this is amazing. Um, mm. But anyway, uh, the plot is basically uh, it's it's a heist movie kind of like Heat. So, but it's a lot, lot snappier than Heat. So, uh, I know your complaints with Heat was kind of like it's overbearing length. Don't worry, a lot more snappier pace. So. You'll probably like it a bit more, but uh, yeah, well acted. Um, the girl from uh, Baby Driver, uh, Darling, was in it. Um, uh, makes sense. She'd be in another fast-paced movie. <laughs> yeah, and um, Jake Gyllenhaal does a good job. Yeah, I like it. Also saw the horror movie X. I wanted to see that, but it left theaters. X go and give it to you. Well, here's the thing: it's on digital now. I know, but yeah. Anyway, theaters. Um, come on, you got to support whatever. Yeah. Oh, by the way, Ambulance, eight out of ten. Second best movie of the year so far, right after Batman. Anyway, X. Uh, I thought it was okay. I expected it to be a bit more grindhouse schlocky, like like say like an Evil Dead movie or Texas Chainsaw Massacre or like um, what's that movie called? Um, any of Tarantino's grindhouse movies. It wasn't. It felt a lot more like a typical A twenty four horror movie, and that's not bad. But it's just like, oh okay. It's so like, it's all right. I just thought it was okay. It's not a bad movie, but I'd give it like a 6 out of 10. And uh, yeah, that's it. And, and the only other thing I saw was um, Abbott Elementary, which is a pretty solid sitcom, mockumentary sitcom. If you like, you know, The Office and Parks and Rec, I'd recommend it. Uh, uh, place I, school. I can offer a contribution saying I saw the bad guys. Oh, what? Tell us about it. Okay, Um, I'll say this. Uh. The animation was stellar, you know, great cell shaded look, really cool. Characters were very likable, but I think where the movie uh, fell short for me was definitely the story. It was, yeah. it was very predictable, and there's a twist villain that I saw a mile away, and at that point, after they revealed the twist villain, the movie kind of dipped for me. I still enjoyed it, but... It the story kind of lost me, and the humor I'd say is more of a mixed bag. Some jokes were really funny, other jokes kind of fell. Overall, I enjoyed myself, but I I wouldn't call it amazing. I'd say it's like a six out of ten. Okay, I still fair. liked it though. I still liked. It. Uh, yeah. One of my friends saw it, and he said that it, it felt like a Loop in the Third movie. If any of you yeah, know. yeah, the animation style definitely felt Loop in the Third. Actually. Uh, I was reminded of a few movies when watching this. The opening reminded me of Pulp Fiction. Ah, and the, that makes uh, sense, yeah. And uh, uh, the wolf. The wolf character reminded me of uh, Nick from Zootopia. Yeah, yeah I figured. Like, not, not just because, you know, like, Sly Fox, uh, Sneaky Wolf, whatever. But yeah. even, um, even like, uh, his, his background and development were kind of similar. Yeah. Like, he's, he figures, I'm a wolf. Everybody fears me. Why should I bother being anything other than that? Yeah. Um... Uh, but I enjoyed it. Uh, yeah. I'd say if, if you if you want to check it out, uh, definitely go for it. But yeah. lower your expectations a bit. Yeah. Um. Listen, they never made the Sly Cooper movie, so this is probably the best bet you're gonna get. But yeah. Yeah, probably. Yeah, that got canceled a while ago. Yeah. yeah. Oh, anyway, uh, just one more quick thing. Um, the creator Chainsaw Man released a new uh, manga, a uh, little like one volume um short story. Highly recommend. It's called Goodbye Airy. Um, it's about like filmmaking and stuff. So um, it, it's great for you guys, too, because you're into movies. But, uh, yeah, if you can uh, get your hands on a copy, highly recommend it. I loved it. Like, 9 out of 10, 10 out of 10. The best thing I've seen, actually, from this list. I'd, I'd say it's good by Eric. Yeah. Um, let's talk about the movie now. Take it All away. right. Uh, how long are we into the recording now? 46 and a half minutes. I think oh this is the God. longest we've gone. We're going to beat out Scott Pilgrim for the longest episode. Let's go. I don't know. All it depends right, on how go. much I edit out. 
<laughs> Watch, wow, edit keep it everything. Let's go. Now, you're going to edit the news Break down the to like record. five minutes. Break nah. the record. I guarantee you. Nah, are, but... even I can't do that. Okay. Break the record. Let's go. Right, guys. Come right, guys. on, let's, let's go. In fact, okay. keep this banter too. <laughs> but as is apparently a new tradition with me, I must go over the incredibly lengthy production history. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. This, guy, this, this, is, this is the gauntlet marathon episode. I don't oh, yeah. know. For some reason, I like choosing movies with interesting production histories, and Speed Racer is quite a tale, but bear with me, okay? You bearing with me? Yep, let's go. Great, all right, let's go, go, go! <laughs> okay, anyway. Speed Racer, released in 2008, based on the Japanese franchise of the same name, and was directed by the Wachowskis of Matrix fame. Uh, a little bit about the anime Speed Racer. Uh, it was it was the creation of Tatsuyo Yoshida. Am I saying that right? Uh, Tatsuyo Yoshida. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and actually, the whole idea for Speed Racer was he took inspiration from two big pieces of entertainment that were popular in the sixties: Elvis Presley and James Bond. Basically, the elevator pitch was: What if Elvis Presley had James Bond's technology? I just, I did not know that. I thought I think that's. And he cool. also drove cars. Like hell yeah. Nice. Yeah. Uh, and though we know it here in the West as Speed Racer, its original name is Mach Go Go Go, and it was one of the first major anime to release in the U.S. Yeah, uh, my dad actually grew up with it, and that's um. As so, did my dad. I think my dad yeah. did too. Yeah, and uh, he showed me the cartoon growing up. So when the movie came out, I was actually really excited because I was like familiar with it. I've never seen the anime. I've seen the memes though. I I've only yeah. seen the memes. Yeah, yeah, we've and all the, uh, seen the terrible voice acting, and we've all seen the parody that uh, Fairly Odd Parents made like twenty something years ago. Yeah, something like uh, that. Dexter's Lab also made a parody, I think. Yeah. But yeah, but basically, before Dragon Ball Z, this was likely how most people got their first exposure to anime. Yeah. But we're here to talk about the movie. So, how did Speed Racer get made into a movie? Well, that all starts in the early 90s with Warner Brothers and producer Joel Silver. And they announced plans to make a film adaptation of Speed Racer with Johnny Depp in the starring role and Julian Temple directing from a script a script written by an up-and-coming screenwriter by the name of Jeffrey Jacob Abrams. Sound familiar? It's the Star Wars Abrams? guy. No, no, not Jeff not JJ Abrams, Jeffrey Jacob Abrams. Completely different guy. Come on. No, in all seriousness, yes. Yeah, whatever, I just... I thought it'd be funny to mention How dare you movie. subvert my expectations. <laughs> anyway, yeah. Filming was set to begin in 1994, but production halted when Depp took some personal time off, and Julian Temple would leave the project because the budget kept increasing. And when Depp came back to film and he realized there was no director, he too ditched out. Mm. So for the next ten years, the project would hop from person to person. From director to director to director and writer to writer. Yeah, but no matter like... who Yeah, go but... on. Uh, yeah, but no matter who was signed on, production never really progressed that far. Like in the late nineties, uh, the director of Gravity, Alfonso Cuaron, was attached to direct, but this ah. never got anywhere. In the early two thousands, music video director Hype Williams was brought on to direct. But oh, this that too never got amazing. anywhere. And uh, in the Hype mid Williams has been a perfect director for this, actually. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, go on. Go on. Though. Actually, um, Julian Temple was also a music video director. Uh, oh, a lot of directors. That? Yeah, a lot of directors uh, start off with music videos. Yeah. yeah. And here's here's an interesting name. In the mid two thousands, Vince Vaughn signed on to executive produce the film because he had a vision, his own vision for what the film would be like. Oh. That hmm. too never got anywhere. No matter who was signed on, the film just couldn't get made. But then came 2006, and this is where the Wachowskis come into the picture. At the time, it had been three years since the release of the third Matrix movie, which means it had been three years since they last directed anything. Though they had gotten work, as they had written the screenplay for V for Vendetta, which released in 2006 to decent reviews and, you know, pretty successful at the box office. But around the same time as V for Vendetta, Another movie came out that made the Wachowskis realize what they wanted their next film to be. And you know what movie it was that inspired them? Attack of the Clones. Cars. No. That movie was Ice Age 2. What? Really? I'm not kidding. 
<laughs> what happened? Okay. Ice Age Blue 2. Sky, you've done it released... again. What? Blue Sky, you've done it again. <laughs> Let me explain. <laughs> Let me explain. This is the unofficial Blue Sky retrospective episode. <laughs> yeah, so, but anyway, let me explain. Ice Age 2 released a few weeks after V for Vendetta. And on its opening opening weekend, it made 70 million, which was about as much as V for Vendetta made in North America by the end of its run in total. And the success of Ice Age 2 made the Wachowskis realize the appeal that family films had and the revenue they brought in. So they decided they wanted their next movie to be a family movie. And after meeting with Joel Silver and hearing that he had spent years trying to get a Speed Racer movie made, they're like, you know what? We Let's love do that. this anime we're... thing. Yeah. yeah. They're, they're huge. They were huge fans of the anime. Yeah, so... yeah. In and I mean, you can tell by the, it know, makes the Matrix. Sen- yeah, it makes sense. I mean, we kind of came full circle. They were inspired by an anime to make a movie. And because of the success of that movie, they're making another movie based on an anime. It, it came full circle. So, yeah. And in 2007, something amazing happened. You know what it was? It got filmed? Yes! The movie was finally actually getting filmed. More than a decade of stalling, the movie was getting off the starting line. Though it wasn't all smooth sailing. Because around the beginning and ending of filming, uh, there was controversy with PETA. At the start, Warner Brothers was continuously contacted by them with the request that they use animatronic chimpanzees instead of real ones. Because one of the chimps bit one of the actors. But even with that, production went, went along. But then around the end of filming, a trainer hit one of the chimps. And wouldn't you know it, the day that happened was also the day a representative from the AHA was visiting production. Mm-hmm. And because of that, the film was given PETA's unacceptable rating. But a movie was being made nonetheless. So I'd say that as still pretty good. The show must go on, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Peter so does not approve was... of Speed Racer. Holy shit. I never thought the two would correlate in any way, but here we are. So now that a movie was actually being made, Warner Brothers signed on several brands to promote with merchandise and such, including McDonald's, Lego, Mattel, Target, General Mills. And it's estimated that they spent around $80 million on marketing and tie-ins. Oh. And when Speed Racer released in May 2008, eh, ugh. Uh, reviews were pretty negative, and it was a box office bomb, only grossing ninety-four million against a budget of one hundred and twenty million. Ouch! And what? though though Warner Brothers was optimistic they would make money for merchandise, the fact of the matter was the movie. <laughs> but there are three main reasons as to why it bombed. Um... First and most obviously, competition. It was released around the same time as Iron Man and Indiana Jones Four. Two of yeah. the most anticipated movies of 2008. Yeah. So funny that um, the era of the Wachowskis ended when, um, well, the next dominating force in pop culture started. <laughs> yeah, but tragically, unfortunately, uh, Speed Racer would start a streak, a, a streak where every film the Wachowskis have made since have been commercial flops. But it also started a streak where almost all of them got a big cult following. We'll get to that. Uh, but yeah, main, one of the main reasons why it flopped was competition. Two was actually the marketing. Parents were confused as to what the target audience was because, you know, it's it advertises as a bright and colorful <laughs> family racing movie. And then it says, from the creators of the Matrix trilogy. And that sends mixed signals because <laughs> it's, like if, it's like if the advertising for Holes said, from the director of The Fugitive. <laughs> no, see that thing didn't confuse me because like the Matrix was about as inappropriate as Terminator, and like two years later, Avatar came out. That was like a family movie, so like I don't know. I don't know. I don't Avatar was PG thirteen. I don't know. The point is, fam- I guess parents were skeptical of taking their kids to a movie from from the creators of like a very existential film. Yeah, fair enough. I, I don't know. Yeah, and the third reason, believe it or not, was the runtime. Speed Racer clocks in at about 2 hours and 15 minutes. And as said with, as said with Wicked, I, I don't think parents really like taking their children to movies that are 2 hours long. I mean, that's not terribly I mean, long. Was it, that's uh, not, back then it was. Nowadays, movie, it's kind of expected for movies to go on like 2 and a half hours. The standard has like increased, but uh, yeah. back but then, more, under 2 hours was the standard. 
Well, the thing is, Warner Brothers wanted the Wachowskis to edit the film down to 90 minutes, but they refused because test screenings were pretty positive. So they're like, we're going to keep the movie as is with two hours and 15 minutes. So, yeah, it wasn't successful, but people who saw it liked it. So, you know. Yeah. Um, so it was a flop initially, but recent years, it's gathered quite a cult following, if, with many saying the film was just misunderstood. Back when, when when it came out, and some have called yeah. it like a masterpiece. Some have said like this is an underrated masterpiece. Yeah, like me, I've been I've been a fan of this movie from day one. I saw it okay. fucking opening weekend. I actually saw it the like exact the movie same before. day. It was cool. I saw the movie the exact same day. I saw Iron Man one to like eight year old me. That was like the greatest day of my life because I got to see the two movies that I wanted to see more than any other movie. If for like the longest time on the same day. It's also really weird how um Iron Man was considered more how Iron Man was more successful because like I was watching an alcoholic womanizer, uh, war criminal, and then Speed Racer, which is like much more clearly for kids, but parents I guess perceived Speed Racer as being less appropriate for kids than Iron Man, which I don't know, I thought that was kind of funny. Actually, I remember I saw this opening day as well. Yeah. Oh, cool. Um, I don't think it was in the same. I don't think it was in the same screening though. I don't remember. That was back I, in 2008. I, the, I either went to the AMC by Chuck E. Cheese or I just went to the you know Clearview bow tie thing that we usually have. I'm pretty uh, sure I saw this movie at home. Um, I have this movie on DVD, but I have not <sighs> seen it in years. Actually, I don't think I've. I don't think I've seen this movie in full since I first saw it back in theaters. Actually, I've only seen uh, clips. I, I've rewatched this movie, um, like last year. I actually, think I rewatched it. So um, yeah, it's kind of. But yeah, this. Oh, uh, what? No, I rewatched this a few, like a week before my birthday, 2022. 2020. 2020, yeah. I saw it. I remember, like, there was a point around this movie came out. This was supposed to be like, this was supposed to be the start of like a franchise revival because. Not only was there the movie, but there was also a new TV show on Nickelodeon. There was merchandise out the wazoo. Yeah. I, I like even remember, too. I even remember, I went to a car show in New York City around the time the movie came out, and they had like a whole section dedicated to Speed Racer with a Mach 5 and everything. Yeah. This movie was like supposed to be like a huge deal, but you know, unfortunate timing and everything. It didn't really pan out. And that's how you kill an icon. Anyway, um, before we were talking about the movie, there's just one more thing I want to talk about. This is one of the first uh, movies to be fully shot in a digital. Um, the before the twenty uh, before you know the twenty tens, uh, most people are still filming on a uh, film. Uh, but uh, the Wachowskis, um, Robert Rodriguez, and George Lucas, they were some of the first filmmakers to adopt um, fully digital. So. Um, mm-hmm. This, uh, so the Star Wars uh, episode two and three, um, Spy Kids uh, one, two, and three, and uh, this. These are like the first movies shot in digital, and uh, I think it looks pretty good. Um, the cinematographer of this movie actually was a cinematographer for the Star Wars prequels. So, so yeah. you know, he got a lot of practice with um, working with digital, so it makes sense. Yeah. So should I give a plot synopsis so we can finally get into the nuts and bolts of this thing? <laughs> Racing. Ha-ha, Very hilarious. funny. And cars. Yeah. And cars and stuff. We're actually playing <laughs> big nuts and bolts. Okay. Um, sure. You Shut mean Banjo Kazooie nuts and bolts? Anyway, a brief plot synopsis of Speed Racer. So, Speed Racer comes from a family with a passion for automobile racing. After his, after his brother, Rex Racer, tragically dies in a racing accident, Speed takes up his brother's career and manages to become a rising star. This catches the attention of Royalton Industries, a conglomerate whose owner, E.P. Arnold Royalton, wants Speed to represent his company. Speed refuses the offer, however, and from then, a lot of racing stuff. Yeah, it's basically just a classic racing movie. Just imagine all the races are the most insane shit you've ever seen in your life. Okay, um, Red, you and me have been doing a lot of rambling. I want Lugia to start us off, actually. So, yeah, Lugia, what do you think, what do you think of Speed Racer? Where do I begin? I have never oh been confused about a movie in so long. <laughs> oh, do tell, do tell. Uh, okay, well, disclaimer, uh, it's been a couple weeks since I saw it, given, you know, the hiatus, so my memory of this movie isn't really going to be as 
potent. Sharp. Yeah. Um, but I I remember a lot of bright colors reminding me a lot of the live action Cat in the Hat movie, which still oh, gives me was... PTSD. All right. To be fair, it looks a lot better. It than does. The Cat in the Hat. It does. But it still gave me those vibes. Um, no, no, it was saturated as hell. I remember more fight scenes than car scenes. <laughs> I mean, what was that about? They get raided by ninjas at one point, and they just fight the ninjas in hey, a man, racing movie. You don't hire the directors of the Matrix and not expect some kick-ass kung fu. Okay, but it came out of nowhere. <laughs> and it's never really addressed again. <laughs> Uh, uh, I love this movie, man. Uh, <laughs> what else? What else? Um, uh, the cars, fucking gadgets. Remember that? Yeah, I mean, the race scenes were actually pretty cool. I'll, I'll give it that. Especially the desert race, I liked that a lot. And the final one was pretty well done as well. Um, but fuck. Overall, overall, you know, I feel like there has been like a constant. Have you ever seen the anime movie Redline? No. No. Okay. This movie feels very similar to Red Line, which is kind of funny because, like, that's an anime, and this is, like, inspired by an anime, but it's, like, inspired by a completely different anime. But, like, you need to see Red Line one of these days because, like, it's... What's weird, though, is this might be more insane than Red Line. Like, I don't know. It's, it's, this movie is visually one of the wildest things I've ever seen in my life. Okay, so, Red, you or me, which one of us is up next? Go ahead. Okay, um, I'll say this, um... This movie is a mess. Like I'll say, like the the script is all over the place. It kind of lacks focus, but it's really? such a fun oh, and it. it's such like a visually surreal, colorful, and fun ride that I enjoyed myself in the end. I don't I don't know if I'm as positive as you are towards it, but I enjoyed myself. I mean, I, I'm, I know I, I sound like I'm crazy for this movie, but, like, I'd still give it, like, a 7 out of 10. There's definitely flaws. I just had, like, a lot of fun, and I thought, like, the general emotional arc was pretty strong. Like, I don't know. That scene where, like, um, uh, Speed is talking to uh, Racer X, and, like, you know, they takes off his mask, I thought that was a good, like, emotional beat. That scene, you know, gets to me. Oh, by the way, spoiler alerts. Um, well, not really spoiler, because it's really fucking obvious. Um, Racer X and Rex Racer. Oh, there's a there's a driver. There's a character in this movie called Racer X that helps speed throughout the movie, but he's like because a masked Rex man is, because Rex is dead. Yeah. Anyway, uh, Rex faked his death, and he is Racer X. Um, in that's the show, really, that's really not too hard to predict. But yeah. Speed doesn't know that because Racer no. X went through some facial surgery just to make sure he looks completely different than how he was before. So Speed yeah. still doesn't um, know that Rex is alive. Which yeah, I thought was that, interesting. Yeah, uh, that wasn't a thing in the anime, by the way. Uh, I found it interesting. Um, it actually, like, I don't even remember if, like, it's ever revealed to speed that, like, Rex and Racer X are the same person. I can't, I, I'm going to need to look back at that. But, in the movie, no. Um, I definitely think this this was sort of, like, a, a bit of a catharsis just as a Speed Racer fan because um, the Wachowskis are like, nah, we, I want, like, Rex to fucking show his face to speed because, like, that never really happened. That that moment never happened in the anime. It was like, no, we need that moment for the movie. Something definitive. But yeah, I fucking love this movie as a kid. I had so many Speed Racer toys. Like I had the Mach 5, Mach 6, like all those little like, I, I had a few Mach I had a few Speed Racer toys. I will admit that. I think I had the yeah. Mach 5. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, if you want to make a movie that kids buy toys of, just make it about cars. Like <laughs> I mean, dip. that's why the Cars movies got so big. Easy um, merchandise. Don't you know I always found interesting? What? I feel like throughout, like, two, two, every few years, I feel like there's a big movie, big, like, sci-fi movie about cars that comes out, and it's like, they're always financial disappointments, but they always got a cult following, because we got Speed Racer, then, like, two years later, we got Tron Legacy, um, which was a bit more successful, um, then Mad Max Fury Road, which was actually successful, but still, like, a little bit of a financial disappointment, but, like, but all of them became like these huge cult followings. Like, man, crazy time to be a car person. And then, you know, the Fast and Furious movies really blew up and those became mm -hmm. actually successful. Literally blew up. Yeah. Uh, I I'm going to say that Speed Racer, this is what planted the seeds for Fast and Furious to take over the world. 
<laughs> and also Mad Max Fury Road. Speed Racer Cruise, so Fast and Furious can go full throttle. Hey! Yes. Hey! Yeah. This movie is also about family. It's all oh connected. God. Yep. <laughs> oh yeah, guys, this, they, they announced... Is, they announced this is, oh god. They announced yeah. Fast X. Yeah, yeah. That's um, just a random thing. Fast X. It's not Fast Racer X coincidence. Belt, yeah, I think it's called Fast X because it's the fastest. Get it? Eh. Yeah. <laughs> People anyway, want to Fast 10 your seatbelt, but whatever. Yeah. Um, I really like the characters. What do you think about the characters? Uh, I think, personally, one of the strongest parts of this movie, other than, you know, the visual style, is the acting. Everybody in yeah. here is, like, they bringing fuck, their A-game. It's, it's a goofy movie, but they fucking commit to it. I don't know. Uh, I John liked Goodman. everybody except for Speed. I feel like he was wooden compared to everybody else. Fair, but he he was playing more of like a straight man. I feel. So I, I feel guess like it, it worked, but yeah. Um, Roger Allen always stood out to me, but I actually really like Susan Sarandon here. Yeah, like that it's... conversation she has with Speed about him racing is him making art. I love that scene. Oh yeah. Speaking of which, uh, Susan Sarandon was just in the news uh, the other day, so I'm just gonna post this in the chat because I think it's very funny. This um, means nothing to our listeners because they can't freaking see it. All right, okay, let me read it. So someone tweeted out, one of the worst things Hollywood ever did is stop making movies where Susan Sarandon gets to act slutty <laughs> now more than ever. And then Susan Sarandon said, hey, there's still plenty of time. I'm like, that's just funny. This tweet went viral like two days ago. We're like, yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, Susan Sarandon's great. John Goodman, he's great as usual. Everyone loves John Goodman. That uh, casting, casting him as Pops was perfect. I've never seen yeah. the anime, but just based on images, it's perfect. Yeah. Um, yeah he did a really, really good like job. I really like Christina Ritchie in this. I thought oh, she, she is great. so pretty. She is so pretty. Oh, dude, I had a huge crush on her as a kid, absolutely, because of this movie. <laughs> this movie, but yeah, she was she was great. I thought she was a uh, she was uh, some of the most fun in the movie. Um, also, mm -hmm. obviously, love Spritel and the fucking uh, Chim Chim. Chim Chim. Yeah, the fucking monkey. It was always my my fucking favorite as a kid. Uh, from what I was watching the show and reading the books, but like, yeah, and the fucking scene where like they get all the fucking candy. I'm like. It should have been me. Like, as a kid, I was screaming, it should have been me. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, this is a goofy, messy movie, but it's also just a lot of fun. Like, it's a 7 out of 10 movie in quality, but like, I don't know. I, I had a great time with it. Um, I would recommend it. Well, um, could we talk about uh, the overall style, like the visuals and everything? I do have yeah. one That's... problem with the style. I mean, mm -hmm. it is cool at first glance how they um hide white transitions with um characters going by and like saying something. Mm -hmm. That's fine. They overuse that so goddamn much. I'll admit that did get repetitive. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, it's from the cinematographer of the Star Wars movies, and no one does a white transition like a Star Wars movie. So. Um, yeah, but yeah, I, I got what you yeah, mean. Yeah. Um, very, very, uh, shoot, what was this, I going to say? There was something I This is to one say. of the most colorful movies I have ever seen. Like, it is saturated to hell and back. Yeah, like, if you, I really like how it captures, like, the, the comic book anime vibe, though, because, like, it kind of reminded me of, like, um, Sam Raimi's Spider-Man movies. Like, Spider it's very, it's very candy-coated. It's very yeah. candy-coated. Yeah, yeah, you half expect to hear, like, fucking uh, Barbie Girl by uh, Aqua to start playing. <laughs> Speaking of which, a Barbie movie's coming out. Uh, Margot Robbie. Oh, yeah, with Margot, with Margot Robbie. I'm gonna call it the Marby movie, because Margot Robbie. Yeah, but, uh, like, I, actually, like, looking at the screenshots from that, it, it, yeah, it is very colorful, like, just like this. So, like... Actually, Barbie movie, I think you mean Legally Blonde 3? Hello? Yeah, this, this is... <laughs> Basically, this is Barbie for men. Like that's what we're saying. Speed Racer. I love is... how we. I love how we keep veering away from Speed Racer. <laughs> this movie is Barbie for men. All right. Um. You know, it's got the classic toys. The boy toys is clearly uh cars. Um. So yeah, this is just the 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 masculine Barbie. <laughs> I, have, I have no idea what I'm talking about anymore. Um. The visual style. Sorry to interrupt, but going back to the visuals, the style to me. The best way I can describe it is that during the racing scenes, you know those 4D simulation rides at amusement yeah. parks? Yeah. That's what it reminds me of. Yeah. Like, it's it's obviously, it doesn't really, it doesn't look real, but I don't think but that's the point. it looks so cool. Like, yeah. it, it doesn't look real at all, but it looks cool. Um, that's all cool. The green screen looked a bit weird to me, though. Like, during the dialogue scenes, I got yeah. used to it eventually, but it's... Like, when Speed first, like, like, walks out of school and he sees his, his brother waiting for him on the street curb, I'm like, oh, is this, like, a, a preschool show on Disney Channel? 
Yeah. Basically, best because, way I can describe I don't mean it, that as a slight or anything. It just that's what it yeah. reminds me of. Yeah. Best way I can describe it is like it reminds me of like it's like it's like what Ang Lee's Hulk and um, Spy Kids 3D was trying to be. But like this time, it was actually like a lot more successful. And like it's still got flaws, but it's it's basically like this is what Spy Kids 3 should have been. Actually, I thought a really cool effect was. Did Spy the Kids the 3 have a ninja fight scene? Didn't think so. I think it uh, one of my one of my favorite I I effects seen in it. the movie is at the beginning when Speed is racing against the ghost of his brother. I saw that and I'm like, is he like racing like a Mario Kart ghost? <laughs> uh, You're like, tell me that's not like. How you gotta use some mushrooms Kart. wisely, Speed. You take you're, you're but, taking this scene of grief and spiritual reckoning and making it about Mario Kart. Uh, no. Well, he he let his brother still keep the best time. He's yeah, a good yeah. brother. He's a good brother. Uh, one more thing about the visuals, Lugia. You said that you were bothered by the wipe transitions. I was, yes. Uh, something that I wouldn't say this bothered me, but I did notice a lot of it. There are a lot of close-up shots in this movie. Of people's yeah. faces. I mean, for the like, race right, scenes, it's fine. Right it gets you there. into no, the action. I mean, I mean, like, during the dialogue scenes. No, no, I know. To be fair, though, that is a thing that it's taking from, like, the anime and the manga. I believe it. It's just, I there were so many of them. I'm like, what? This is yeah. weird. Also, uh, the Wachowskis really like Westerns. They reference Westerns, like, in the Matrix movies before. So I think it might be a Western reference, too, because, like, the, you know, the classic. Uh, you know how westerns they always yeah like, yeah the, have close yeah, the, the eyes yeah. and stuff yeah mm -hmm. also uh one more thing i want to say about the visuals the racing scenes are definitely visually interesting that's when the movie gets the most colorful and everything but i'll admit the later racing scenes they're a bit hard to see things clearly yeah editing is a bit fast yeah like like i'm sure it's i'm sure like it looks cool from what i can see but a lot of it is like blurs the later colors. races definitely looked a lot better than the first few Really, I, I felt the opposite. Actually, I felt like I guess because the first race wasn't really focused on like the gadgets and everything. That's when you could see things the most clearly. Well, here's the get, thing: like, a lot of the first wide. race also awkwardly cuts in uh, character backstories, so I feel like the pacing is very off for that first race. And then when it goes focusing solely on those races, I feel like the pacing is a lot better um, because they're well. That's just what they're focusing on. It's just the race and nothing else. Yeah, it's definitely not a perfect movie. Um, yeah, no. God no. <laughs> yeah, there is one thing though. I would have. Uh, I if there's only if there's one thing that I wish did happen was um Keanu Reeves was offered the role of Racer X, uh, but he declined. Um, man, if, imagine if Keanu said yes. Uh, <laughs> actually, that the actor for Racer X is pretty good, so I'm actually happy with that. But yeah, <laughs> just funny. But uh, yeah, let me see if I have uh, anything else you guys want to add on. Um, um, I know Spritel's your boy and all, but I feel like this movie would have been a little better for me personally if Speed was just an only child after Rex died. Fair, but, um, I don't know, it, it's a kid's movie, so I, I feel like it works for kids, but yeah. But he doesn't really have any plot significance. I mean, I, I get it. You gotta keep the kids entertained and all that, but he, mm -hmm. he was more annoying than anything, and he didn't really serve a purpose. I remember when I was younger, I really liked the scene where he quickly changes the channel on the TV. That made me laugh. Oh yeah, I remember absolutely nothing from this movie after the first time I saw it. Everything, it's basically like just watching the movie for the first time again. It's been that long. Actually, actually, I made a list of uh, the things I did remember before watching this movie. Uh, just, just to go down a little bit. Here's, here are some of the key words I remember from Speed Racer. Pancakes, candy, piranhas, ninjas, Monkey. guns, Rex blowing up Speed's go-kart, Pops monologuing to Speed about how he learned to enjoy eggs, and the Mach 5 driving so fast the tires start melting. That's everything I remembered before I watched the movie again. Oh, by the way, Lugia, one thing. You can cut Spritel, but you have to keep the funny monkey. 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 All right, um, fine, I'll give yeah. you that. If they ever make a live-action Mario Kart movie, though, they should just remake this, but with, like, the Mario characters. Uh... Luigi my, died tragically in a car Luigi. accident. <laughs> my brother Luigi. He, he comes away. back as Mr. L, but Mario doesn't know. Oh, yeah, Mr. L, shit, that's fucking perfect. Oh, it's a fucking safe <laughs> Mario character. <laughs> uh, Mario goes to Professor Egad and is like, why can't you bring him back as a ghost? He's like, ah, 
But uh, yeah, um, I liked it. Seven out of ten, solid time. Uh, if you like this movie, I'd recommend Red Line or uh, Mad Max Fury Road. To, uh, to me, a movie that came to mind was actually Scott Pilgrim, where you know it's like I kind of see it, ride, yeah, but yeah, it does suffer fair. from style over substance. Yeah. Yeah, like it's it's a it's a mess. Uh, but I will say I do think the character relationships here are stronger than Scott Pilgrim. Really? I mean, uh, at least at least because it's yeah, about I, family. I, I honestly kind of agree. I kind of agree. Actually. Yeah, yeah. I would give this movie a. I, but I do. But I do think Scott Pilgrim is overall a bit tighter. Yeah. No, it's definitely a better. And movie also, it's directed by Edgar Wright, who is probably the best director out there. One of. Well, I mean, the Witch Out, the Matrix is like a perfect movie, but like from a filmmaking perspective, so they're they're both great. But yeah. So yeah, uh, for me, Speed Racer, uh, enjoyable movie. You know, visually interesting, very stylized, fun, colorful, uh, messy though. But I'd say you know it's it's held afloat by like the racing scenes and the performances. Yeah, I enjoyed it's got it. Like a, it's got a very like Spider-Man three element to it. It's goofy, campy, but it, it's a lot of fun. The thing is, it knows what it is. Yeah, it knows what it is. It knows what it is. And I would give this a six out of ten. I did find myself enjoying it a little bit more after the halfway mark, <laughs> but um, just a little bit. I was still bewildered by what I was seeing, and uh, I think this is the closest we'll ever get to an F Zero movie. Yes. Anyway, actually, actually, guys, one more thing. This is incredibly random, uh, but you know who I think would actually be a good choice for directing a live-action anime movie? Who? As Lerman. For what yeah. anime? It just I don't know, but like I his know. his style, he has like a very snappy, quick, fast style. I feel like that would translate no, well because I know the that's kind of what friend. Speed Ra that's kind of what Speed Racer was like at instances. Yeah. No, I know the perfect anime for him. He should adapt uh, Bacchano. It's got a uh, Romeo and Juliet. His Romeo and Juliet movie really got a, sim a similar vibe to Bacchano. This big, snappy, fast-paced, uh, modern uh, thing. But it's got the story is like this big, right. sprawling Shakespeare and epic. Yeah, so, like yeah, like I know, I know, I know. I know. Live-action Hollywood movies based on anime have a pretty terrible track record. But I'm saying, I think he would be a good choice to try it. <laughs> If they ever make like a live action loop of the third movie, I'd hire the guy who did the uh, Ocean's Eleven movies. Okay, yes, this episode is like dedicated twenty five percent to Speed Racer. Yeah, whatever. kind of. Anyway, um, but we talked about it and we gave our endorsement. Anyway, next week, uh, if you thought this movie was crazy and um, hard to follow, um, it, it is. And but this movie is, you know, it'll give it a run for its money. Um, we're going back to the Cage Man this time, Nicolas Cage. Uh, my recommendation is Adaptation by director Spike Jones and writer Adaptation Charlie of what? The movie's called That's Adaptation. Called, it's called Adaptation. But an adaptation of what? Um, it's an adaptation of this book called, like, uh, the... Adaptation actually is an adaptation. That's, like, the thing. This is a very meta movie. Aha, so it is an adaptation. It is. It's an but adaptation. But of what? Oh, John the Malkovich thief. is in it. The Orchid Thief. It's an adaptation of The Orchid Thief. Good, we got clarification. Finally. All right. Um, yeah, so this is from the uh, writer and director of... Um, this is the same duo that brought us being John Malkovich, which explains why John Malkovich is in this movie. Is John Malkovich in this movie? Yeah, he is. He's not. Where? I see I him on the cast the list. Oh. He might have a cameo, maybe at the beginning, because uh, the start of the movie, we do see them filming being John Malkovich. It's a very meta movie. It's about, you know, making a movie. It, so I guess this might remind you of, like, I don't know. This is a very unique movie. I really like it. It's one of my favorites. Uh, Charlie Kaufman is, I think, one of the best writers in Hollywood. But, uh, yeah. Next movie is Adaptation uh, 2002 from the director Spike Jones. Spike Jones. Probably one of Nicolas Cage's best movies, like unironic best movie. You got uh, anything to close us out? Go!